Hey guys, good morning. How are you all this fine Monday morning? I don't know about how you guys are seeing this, but on my iPad we're sideways, despite the fact that it's oriented correctly on my phone, which is what we're broadcasting with. It seems like I'm always having issues. Nope, it goes sideways. It doesn't like the iPad. I don't know, they need to fix the app on the iPad. Alrighty. I hope you guys are all having a good day. Good morning, Ruth. I had to make a third cup of coffee because you know some days are just like that, right? You need an extra cup of coffee. Good morning. Hi, how are you? Okay, and I'm going to clip this wire out of my way because like I said, I'm having one of those mornings and this hanging wire, which you can't see unless I do this. Yeah, that's going to drive me crazy. <laughs> all right, we're going to clip that out of our way. Life is good. I'm, You know what? I'm on the right side of the dirt, so it's all good. Cold brew. Yeah, I love, you know, God bless my parents. It's all their fault. <laughs> I love coffee. Cold, hot, sweetened, unsweetened. It doesn't matter. If you let me, I would drink it all day. That's really bad for you, but yeah, I do try to limit how many cups I have. All right, so we're gonna do some Monday with deco art this morning and um, I pulled this actually off of my studio wall I actually did ten of these little paintings last year um, I know right um, and I gave all of them except this one away as gift they were gifts and this is one way to do faces these are faceless girls and um, they're easy way to do a face an interesting face and to do um, uh, it without a lot of pressure and, um, to, um, learn about shading and get something that is suggestively realistic and interesting without getting too fussy. So we're going to work on this this morning. So you brew it cold and then you drink it hot. You know, I love coffee. Any old way. I guess I shouldn't do that. My whole table shakes a little bit. <laughs> It's like we're on an earthquake we're not really all right so I've got some more little four by four canvases and before we get started and we're gonna like do flesh tones today uh, mix flesh tones and acrylic we did it in watercolor on Wednesday um, but while we're um, doing that this first layer on here can dry now when I did these these are all paint and then some stabilo pencil or that might be charcoal I don't remember now Hello, Lisa. Um, I didn't do any collage first that I remember, but on these I thought since I have these really great papers, uh, my screen is sideways on my iPad, on the camera, on the phone, it's fine. I will reorient the picture when I load it to YouTube. I don't know. <laughs> Deco Art has these Deco Page Americana Deco Page papers. They have lots of different patterns. I pulled this one out of the things that they sent me. This is the Victorian Romance set. Um, I was attracted to these colors. Autocorrect is not our friend, Jerry. <laughs> I hate autocorrect. So I, I ripped off a few pieces and I thought we would put these on here first and let them dry while we mix some flesh tones. And um, also while we're doing this, you guys don't be afraid to ask me questions. Um, Yes, we're doing kind of a free mini art lesson here when we're on live on Periscope, but also I want you to, guys to start using this as an opportunity to ask me questions as a Q&A session. I will always do a little bit of a demo for you while we're on here, um, but I do want you to um, be feel free to ask me questions about you know art or something you're having, a, you know, artistically that you're having a problem with or anything like that. So I'm just using, this is um, fluid matte medium. Um, I normally would use DecoPage, which is by DecoArt, because I really like their decoupage medium, but the matte medium dries a little faster. And in this case, because we're live and you guys don't want to wait eternity for things to dry, I figured it might be more advantageous to use the fluid matte medium. But definitely, if you're not nuts like me and live on camera, <laughs> I would use the um, DecoArts DecoPage because I think it works really well. 
I'm not worrying too much about, you know, how these are going on or which way they're oriented. This is just to give which way they're oriented or anything. I do have to learn to finish my sentences, don't I? Oh, yeah, yeah. All right. I'm just getting um, some pattern and texture on the canvas. I will try to do my standard warning here. Anybody who's on here who's going to post anything nas nasty or be troll-like, don't even bother because if I don't block you, one of my um, art friends here will because that's not what the rest of us are on here for. And I get tired of y'all asking to see my boobs because honestly, I'm 52. They're not that cute anymore. <laughs> that, that offends some of you art people, I'm sorry. I, have, I just realized that might be offensive. <laughs> oh, well, see, I got lots of, lots of hearts there. All right, so I like that. I also, for some reason, I like this like old-fashioned flower print. I don't know what's up with that this morning, but we're going to put that. I know, right? I was talking to my husband about that, and I'm like, you, you know, honestly, I'm 52. I don't know. Nobody wants to see that. <laughs> they keep asking, but... Yeah, they were. You know, that was a long time ago. <laughs> All right, so I really like, there's something about this paper collection this morning that's just really caught my eye. So we're gonna put some of this on here. I wanna put, and I was thinking I would just use one or the other of the prints, but I'm really getting the urge as we're sitting here To put all of these on here. I know, right? These people are funny. I try to look on it like Shannon Green does, and she kind of makes fun of all the trolls on her YouTube channel. So, and I think she's on live right now. Um, dang it all! So I might be losing some viewers to Shannon being on. I know. Um, I'm not sure if she's here on Periscope or if she's on YouTube. I did get a notification right as I was going live, but I wasn't paying any attention because I was trying to get ready for you all. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't think on purpose she does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some, you know, some people have sad, lonely lives and I'd feel sorry for them if they weren't so aggravating. All right, so we're gonna put that matte medium out of the way because that's the last little bit I'm gonna need. And I'm gonna put a piece on here. These little tiny canvases make great Christmas gifts. And you can do, you know, little landscapes on them. You can do little mixed media pieces on them, um, faces. You can do lots of stuff with them. And you know, almost everybody, that's a little bit of a big piece of paper. Let me just, instead of trying to wrap that around, I can do happy, you can do happy trees. Definitely you can do happy trees. I did a happy trees, I'll show you. I did the um, Periscope hop thing where we were celebrating Bob Ross. Okay, so now we've got these and they're all covered with um, our decoupage papers and the matte medium and it's going to just sit here and dry. I'm going to put them to the side. Um, in the last couple live Mondays with Deco Art, we did our sunflower and this is the one I did on the periscope of, uh, hop with the happy trees and today we'll do some faces. First, we've got to mix some flesh tones. Any questions you have about me, where to email me, how to get a hold of me, where my online shops are, my Facebook group, my um, newsletter email list, all that stuff, go to GinaBAarons.com, it's all there. All right, so the um, other only thing I have that's not deco art this morning is my Stabilo pencil, because I do think we're gonna wanna use that. But we're gonna need a palette knife. This is one made by deco art. I love the green color, don't you? And I've had a lot of plastic palette knives Oh yes, please. I love love the hearts. Oh, and I love brown. Um, 
I love the plastic palette knives and this one I've broken a lot of these in my day but I love these green ones they seem to hold up pretty well um I need a rag all right so we're gonna start by mixing some orange I have the deco art artist tradition sampler set here you can get these I think they have 12 little bottles in them including some paints and a couple of mediums and we want a red and a yellow now I'm going to show you a couple things so there's a couple of reds here but one of the reds is a lot more purple than the other one this is red violet and this is naphthol red so it's really best when you're starting to practice mixing skin tones use the sample that you're shooting for as your own skin tone that just makes it really easy and since I'm pale and pasty we'll use that color <laughs> pale pasty is that a color then I'm going to add a little bit of Hansa yellow to both of them and we're shooting for an orangey color and when I mix flesh tones normally I mix a lot of it and then I will put it in a small separate container and just have it around now because this violet one already has some blue in it because it's violet you're gonna already get this interesting color yeah this is actually no this isn't a palette plate this is a white ceramic plate from the dollar store don't go spend 20 bucks on a palette plate go to your dollar store no matter where what part of the country you're in whether you're in you know the East Coast the South you have some kind of Dollar Tree Dollar King Dollar General go there and buy a palette uh, white plate good morning Cindy so this was already kind of a nice purpley flesh tone already a dark color because it already had blue in it this one is not it's very I don't, know, I don't know anybody who's really that color so we need to brown it up a little bit by putting some blue and I'm gonna use ultramarine blue now any of you that know me especially my friends on here um, hey um, any of my friends on here um, who know me, Cindy, Jerry, <laughs> I hate mixing colors, and if I can help it, I just buy the color because I know how, but it's not my favorite thing. So you're shooting for a dark flesh tone color. Now, I have not ever done this and had it come out exactly right the first time, like ever. That's still too red because I don't know anybody who's really even a, a dark flesh tone is that color. So I'm going to add some more blue to that. Now, if you're worried about, yeah, if you're worried about getting, um, having the paint dry out before you're done, you can um, add some um, extender. Deco Art makes an extender which extends the drying time of the paint. And I'm going to add a bit to both. That's better. I'm liking that better. So now we're going to add some white to both of them. I did pull out a couple bottles of the, of the big bottles that I have because there's a couple colors that I like that don't come in the kit that I might want to use. So now I'm going to take and I'm going to add some white to half of that dark color I made and if you only do half then you have a darker shade of the same flesh tone that you can use for the shadows this is a deco art all of these um, items that are using this morning um, you can get at decoart.com um, they should also have them at your local arts and crafts store but I would if you're like me and you have multiple issues with going outside, <laughs> uh, not only anxiety issues, but I have right now this time of year I can't go outside because of all of the holiday um, candles and pine cones, and I'm allergic to all of them. <laughs> so um, I do lots of online ordering, and that's just easy for. So looking at these two flesh tones, I actually like this one better. 
than this one. I think this one's still a little, this is a little red. I might need to add some yellow to this one. So when I'm mixing flesh tones, if I get a color that I like, then I just mix a whole bunch of it up and I save it in my little containers and that way I don't have to do, worry about doing it again. Okay, let's, that might be too much yellow, but we're gonna find out here in a minute. So like we did in one of the first deco art uh, Mondays of deco art where we mixed every color with every color to see what we would get and we made kind of a color chart. This is why you should do this. Okay, see this is what happens. Then you add a color to fix it because it's too red and then you make it too yellow. And... Yeah, that's not bad. Putting it next to my skin tone, it's not, not horrible. <laughs> it's not, I mean, you know, I'm going to end up not using a lot of it, so it's okay. We're going to leave it, but you could keep mixing it and mixing it until you get something that's exactly right. When you do get something that's exactly right, what I do recommend that you do is make some notes. Put a little swatch of the piece of, of the color onto your piece of paper and make some notes. All right. My desk is a mess again. Why is it every Monday morning when we do this, my desk is a mess? All right, we're going to move this to the side here my brushes in the water. I've got my rag. These are just about dry. So let's do a faceless girl first and then we'll do one with features. Wait, I need coffee. So decoart.com. Decoart makes um, the Americana brand, um, Decoart Media, Deco Page. Um, they make a lot of different products. Andy Skinner stencils and, and products. And I'm, I really like their paints. I'm pretty impressed with them. All right, let's see. I'm going to start with a Filbert, my preferred paintbrush. And this is uh, number two. See, I do. I know that I have a couple of Amish dolls. Um, and I like that. Let's see. I don't have my glasses on. Number eight Filbert, sorry. <laughs> All right, so we're going to start with the flesh tone and I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick this one I'm gonna just follow my instincts I'm gonna put in an oval for the face or at least part of an oval and the neck and you don't because you don't don't do a, um, a floating head that's kind of art art no no a neck and a shoulder now you could do two heads you know like on this one I did two like two friends you definitely could do that I'm gonna put out on my palette some white some aquamarine some Americana neon and torn orange Americana neon and sizzling pink these are all colors that I use when I do these paintings a lot. This is the same Americana Neon in Scorching Yellow. And then I'm going to use um, Thalo Blue. And I've got some Raw Umber, which is a dark brown. And I think I want some Quidocridone Violet, which is this other big bottle that I pulled out. All right, and that's a nice color palette to do this with. Yeah? Okay. So now going back to my Filbert brush, I am going to grab some um, of the Neon Orange I'm going to decide where my light is coming from. Um, and I think it's going to be coming from the right. So I'm going to start just dabbing in some of the orange. I'm not going to really clean my brush. I'm going to, at least for the moment, I'm going to keep it kind of dirty. It'll blend with the orange paint that's on here. I'm okay with that. Remember, we're doing a faceless girl. 
I'm going to clean it off a little bit now and I'm going to go into the aquamarine and I'm going to use that on the other side of the face where the shadows would be where it's not in the sun don't be afraid to like get your fingers in there this is about suggesting a face and not this is not a realistic face not not by any stretch and you can also take your brush when you're done with the face part and just wipe it off on over here on the background to just sort of clean it and get some paint and marks over there I'm going to take some white and I'm going to put the white in where the lighter parts of the face normally would be if I was going to paint features in. I'm going to sort of smudge it with my fingers and move the paint around. Remember we're not painting features. We're suggesting features but we're not painting features. Okay, while that dries a teeny bit, let's put some hair in. I'm going to take some of the dark blue that I have here. And I'm going to start suggesting some hair. Now don't do a suggestive face, but then paint lots of details in the hair because then you just kind of shot yourself in the foot. We want the whole thing to be real suggestive. Yeah. I'm going to grab some of my brown. And some white. Now if you get a mark on there that you like, leave it, go with it, work it in. Don't feel like you have to cover it up. Okay, and then I want to do something down here. Let's see. I don't know what that means. Is that Russian? I have trouble with English. It's really terrible. My grandmother was born in Italy. I don't speak a word. My husband is first generation. His family was from Germany. Don't speak a word of that. I can say um, spoken the English and they say nine and then I'm in really big trouble because yeah, that's as far as I can get yet. I'm gonna suggest the cheeks. And you can use this neon pink. No, I'm sorry. My daughter's boyfriend is Lithuanian and she's learning to speak that but you know, again, me, I have trouble. <laughs> I'm going to lighten up my flesh tone a bit with some more white here. And this is not about covering up your brush strokes or anything like that. That's where we are right now. That's cute. I'm going to use the dark shade of my flesh tone now, and I'm going to come in here. Now you could use, leave the blue in there. The blue is a great indicator of shadows. But if you want to do something that's, you know, a similar idea but with some more realistic flesh tones than the goofy ones then use your dark flesh tone as your shadow color and then the other thing I want to do is I want to kind of uh, mute the background a little bit it's a little bit too bright and competing with the face I want the face to be the thing that focuses that the viewer focuses on more. Um, so I'm gonna take some of our white and I'm gonna take, let's see, some of it aquamarine. And a little bit of the yellow.
make something that's a little more greenish. I'm going to put it in around our figure. To just kind of mute the background a bit. And then I'm going to come in here with my finger and I'm going to just soften those edges. And don't forget to put some paint on the sides of your canvas. Okay, you all must just love watercolor Wednesday way better than Monday with deco art because there's only eight viewers. I'm glad to have eight of you. Here are the die hard, the die hard ones. I'm going to put some white in here a little bit too, just with my finger. Hey Mark, good morning. Okay, now before you call this done, thank you so much, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, so before you call this done, you wanna further define your girl um, by giving her a few lines. Now, if the paint was dry, which it's not, and I would not recommend doing this until it was dry. Because we're doing this live, we don't have time for that. But if it was dry, I do really like these DecoArt glass paint markers. Now I know they're intended for glass, but the black and the white are very opaque and they work really well on lots of different surfaces, um, including canvas and um, fabric. So um, I really love them. But you will ruin the tip of your marker if you use it on wet paint. And that's true with any paint marker. So we're gonna come in here with a Stabilo pencil. which is a water soluble pencil, so it doesn't care if the paint is wet. And we're gonna come in here and we're gonna give her some, some lines and we're gonna define like the shape of her top, the shape of her neck, the shape of her face. We'll give her hair some lines to define that too. And there you have it. Now you could you could collage a little, you know, inspirational word or quote on there and that would be a really cute Christmas gift. Just a faceless girl. So let's put her up here and let her dry. She really is cute. I'm going to have trouble giving her away. All right. Now let's do another one. You guys let me know if you have any questions. All right, wait, I need a sip of coffee. I don't know how to share the video while I'm broadcasting. Maybe some of you guys can do that. We are painting mini canvases, four by four canvases with DecoArt um, products, creating some little Christmas gifts. I just did this one. We're gonna do another one. Alrighty, so let's go with a smaller brush. Um, you know, I spent a lot of, that's such a loaded question for me. I spent a lot of years in retail decorating a lot of Christmas trees. Christmas is not my favorite holiday. <laughs> I don't like decorating Christmas trees anymore. Um, that being said, I love spending time with the family and we will probably be spending time with my daughter's boyfriend's family and also my mother-in-law um, who's um, not getting any younger and we like to spend as much time as we can with her. So I'm going to start with um, a light flesh tone. I'm, I'm mixing some white in it. I'm making a really light color. And you notice I'm using this one that we made with the uh, violet red. Um, and I'm really liking this color a lot. It's a really great color. Um, um, my husband is German, so a lot of our traditions um, are 
based in German traditions, um, but um, we usually celebrate on Christmas Eve. Spending time with the family, going to church, it's really that's, I'm really not a fan of doing a lot of the other crazy stuff, all the shopping and all that stuff. Okay, so now I've just outlined my face like I did the other one. And you know what? Since we're doing a more detailed face, let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. There we go. Oh, fix my chair. All right. So we've outlined our face with the light color. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to, I'm using the same brush and I'm going to just start painting in like the highlight of the forehead, the bridge of the nose, there'd be a light spot under the chin, the cheeks, painting around things. Okay. Then I'm going to take a dark, the dark color. And I'm going to put shadows in, put the dark color in the shadows, I should say. Now your face is going to look a little odd until we get all of those details in and until we get the whites of the eye in. So I'm just kind of blocking in the lips, the nose, the area around the eye, maybe the suggestion of the eyebrows. I want something with a stiffer Here we go. This really tiny little flat brush. I've had it so long I don't even know what it is, but it's a teeny tiny little flat. It's really great for these small canvases. It's good for blending. So I'm going to just blend some of this dark paint I put on here into the light paint. I'm not going to blend it completely, so then what happens is you get the dark shades, but then you also get kind of and the light shades, but then you get also medium shade. And because we put the extender in the paint, we don't have to worry about it drying too quickly. Oh yeah, this brush is going to work much better. And this is just a first layer. Yeah, you need a detail brush, and I like a, like a small, short, flat brush with like stiff bristle, bristles for doing this kind of blendy thing on this small canvas. Normally I would just use my fingers or something, but this canvas is too small for that and my fingers are too big. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna go in with, I'm gonna go in with some white. And we're gonna block in the eyes. There we go. <laughs> Can you see her coming along? <laughs> Maybe. So I'm using the light color again. I'm going to wipe my brush off on my rag to get the excess paint off and then I'm going to blend in some of this paint, the light color I just put on here. And it's really just about layers and blending and don't worry about, you know, losing any part of the painting and treating anything too preciously. You can always bring it back. One of the joys of acrylic paint is that it really is all about layers of mark making. I'm going to use my neon orange to represent, or I'm sorry, to suggest um, sunlight and brightness and warmth. So I'm going to put in a little bit of the neon here. And 
I'm moving around the canvas and that's giving the eyes a little time to dry. I'm going to take some of the neon pink and I'm going to dab it into the cheeks here a little bit and then wipe my brush off. And then in using a dabbing motion, just blend those like little blobs of paint in a bit. There we go. She's looking pretty good. Let's do something with her hair while we let her face dry a bit. Now, you notice I su suggested her lips, the upper lips darker than the bottom lip, that would be normal. Um, the bridge here of her nose and the ball of her nose would be brighter. There would be a shadow underneath the nose and two shadows for the nostrils. I did suggest all those while I was doing the painting. Um, also, there would be some shadows around the eye All right, but now let's do the hair. I really like giving my girls blue hair. I do not know what's up with that, but let's do it again. So we're gonna use the dark blue that's on our palette. Welcome everybody who's just joining. We're doing some little paintings here on four by four canvases in preparation for Christmas. I've got to go buy some stolen. Either that or make some. I, I don't usually make it. I know how, but it's easier to buy it. It's my favorite Christmas cake. And I know some of you are like, ooh, because it's like fruitcake, but um, I like stolen. I don't like American fruitcake, but I like stolen. So now, now I'm putting some brown similar colors to what I did on the other one. I'm good. Hey, LP Red Flower, how are you? I was trying to catch up on everybody's YouTube videos this morning that you all that y'all posted on um, YouTube this weekend. Okay, so she's got a cute hairstyle, but it's really dark, right? So now we're going to come in like we did with the other one. We're going to add some white. Now, although she's way more realistic than the other one in that we're going to paint and suggest some features, I don't do anything that's super realistic. So um, she'll still be pretty suggestive. And we will still be coming in with a pencil and doing some stuff there. Hey, thanks guys. I'm gonna, I made her hair a little bit too light, so I'm gonna come back in with some dark. So you want to make sure in any painting, and this is true whether you're working with watercolor or acrylic or any oils, whatever medium you're working in, crayons, you wanna make sure your paintings have a good balance of light tones and dark tones to make it look interesting for the most part, in my opinion. So this is some of the brown and I'm just, I'm just adding layers of marks to her hair to make it look interesting. You see, I goofed up her face there a little bit. Alrighty, baby wipe. Let's see if I can do this without making a big mess. So baby wipes are great for painting with acrylic. They will get a lot of stuff off. I might have to just work that in because <laughs> that's not wanting to come off. I can do that. So sometimes what did Bob Ross call them? Happy accidents? This is the shadow side of the face anyway, so if I was going to get some blue on one side of the face, this is a good side to do it on. So I'm going to work it in as if it was part of the shadow color, which I probably would have done eventually anyways. Let me know as we're going if you guys have any questions. 
to bring some of the blue down here just to make it look cohesive. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's do a little bit here too. I knew I wanted to do faces this morning before somebody asked, but no, I didn't plan it beyond that. I know somebody is going to ask at some point. I didn't plan it. I know I almost never do. I just I just start painting. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. These little canvases are fun to do. They're easy to practice on, and they're great to give as gifts because everybody has room in their in their space for a small canvas. If you're like me, and you've been on this planet a few years, <laughs> a few years, and you've lived in your house for a while, you don't have room on the walls. But you know, you have room for us, not for a, something big. See, but you have room for little ones. I always thought it would be cool, and someday in my dream studio, I'm going to do this. So you guys should be prepared. I want to do like one whole wall that's covered in little mini four by four canvases from all of you guys. How cool would that be to get a bunch of your friends together, paint some little four by four canvases and put them all on the wall, smack up close next to each other, just covering a whole wall. Wouldn't that be cool? Okay, while her hair is drying a bit, let's go back to her face. See, I, I sometimes wish my walls were more bare than they are, but I've lived here a long time and, and I'm an artist and they're just not, they're just not bare. <laughs> I know I have to work on it, right, Cheryl? Maybe it's something I need to add to my list for next year because I think it would be so cool. I have a little wall by my doorway that's got a few pieces on it from different friends and fans of you guys, the things you've sent me in happy mail, but I don't have... Like, I just think a bunch of little canvases all in the same size would be fun. Okay, I like that. So I'm gonna, I wanna, I still want to um, let her face dry a little bit before we do the eyes. I'm gonna work on the background. Um, and I'm gonna even do the background before we do anything with giving her like clothing, which you don't have to do, but I like the idea of doing that. I'm going to, um, <laughs> I'm going to put some yellow back here. This is the neon yellow. A museum of friends art. Yeah, that's exactly what it would be. So yeah, when you're working on faces, one thing I struggled with in the beginning is, um, you know, really just getting anally compulsive and wound up about the shading being perfect. And the thing I like about being ex an expressive painter um, is that it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, in fact, it's about it not being perfect and suggesting things with different marks. And I love that, and that's perfect for me. Um, otherwise, it was just adding to my anxiety disorder level, and that was just not a good thing. <laughs> not in any stretch of the imagination was that a good thing. So now I'm gonna add some of the um, aquamarine turquoisey green colors that we've got on our palette. I'm just laying them in over the background random, pretty randomly. Making sure to get some color on the edges. And the only way to get better at it and to get, oh thank you, um, to thanks Jerry, um, and to get something that you like and to start develop your own style is to just practice. There's just, there's no shortcut, unfortunately, because y'all know I love a good shortcut. If there was one, I would tell you, but there's not. Um, I also took a lot of classes with a lot of different artists and watched a lot of YouTube videos and tried a lot of different things. And, um, that's the other thing to do. All right, we're going to let that dry a little bit. I like that. Oh. I, as I say that, I'm thinking, oh, wait, <laughs> wait, wait. So I'm just going to, with my finger, you know, I can't do a canvas without getting my fingers involved. That just never happens. Okay, yeah, now I can leave that to dry a bit. Let's do something with her, her eyes. 
I have a small detail brush here. Let's see, did I grab a little one? I think this one will work. It's got a good, you just need one with a good point on it. And this is, uh, again, it's all worn off, but I'm pretty sure this is a Donna Dewberry one stroke painting brush. And it's just a really small um, little round brush with a decent tip. And I am going to, for this now, before we get started, I'm going to get some carbon black out. Because we will want it to, oh, that's just plenty, a little touch of that. It, you didn't see that off, it, off camera, it just splattered onto my plate, so that works. Um, I am going to start with mixing my blue and my brown that I have on my plate. I have raw umber and phthalo blue. It's going to give me a dark brownish blue and I'm going to use this color and we're going to, is there a hair? Yeah. Hair on my brush, sorry. We're going to use this to um, suggest an eyebrow and I'm barely, barely touching the brush to the canvas. Oh yeah, I'm on here live um, every Wednesday and every other Monday. And it's a great time to, you know, ask me questions and stuff. So I look forward to seeing you back on here again. Okay, so that's just a suggestion of an eyebrow. I made this one a little too long. So let's just get a damp brush in here while the paint is wet and fix it. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna use the same color that I, we mixed our brown and our blue together. And I'm gonna come in here to the top of the eye, where the eyelashes would be. And I'm not gonna really paint all the eyelashes in, but I'm gonna just put a dark line there and that's gonna suggest the eyelashes. Again, I'm barely touching um, the canvas. If you get a smudge, use it to your advantage and let it help you suggest another feature on the face or a shadow. I'm going to just put a little bit of this dark color where the nostrils would be. I'm going to put some of this color here in the lips, Let's see, between the two lips, the upper and the lower lip. And then I'm gonna get my little flat brush out and tap it, on, tap it off on my rag so it's not too wet and I'm going to just blend that a little bit into the upper lip. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And then I'm going to put some underneath the lower lip. There'd be a shadow right there. And then I need to decide what color her eyes should be. Let's do blue. Let's do, actually, I'm gonna mix a little white into the same dark color we've been using. And I'm gonna, we're gonna try something, why not? I'm gonna put a little bit of that on there. It's like, a, now it's like a greenish blue color, which that's a good color. Then we're gonna take some of our aquamarine. If you look in the mirror at your own eyes, they're not, the iris, which is the colored part of the eye, is not all one color. Um, there's lots of colors in there. Okay, that brush was really wet and I just got a lot too much water on there. So let's see if we can lift it a bit. Like I have brown eyes, but if I look in the mirror, there's lots of amber colors and red colors and some really dark black colors in my eye. Now I'm gonna take some white. I'm gonna touch up the white part of the eye, which is called the sclera. Too much on this one eye. Who 
oops. See, one of the good things about doing these live shows is you guys see I make mistakes just like you all. But what did I say about acrylic paint is about layers of marks. So if you don't get it right the first time, don't freak out. Just let it go. Let it dry. And just keep going and make marks. So now this is black. So I'm going to put the black in the middle where the pupil would be. I'm going to run a little bit of it on the upper lid. <laughs> well, see, you didn't see the mistake, so no big deal. <laughs> I do make them. I make plenty of them. So now, to make her eyes have a little bit of a life, you want to add a little bit of white, like a reflection. Now, I like to put my fingertip over those white dots after I make them, and that just smudges them and makes them a little less perfect. I am going to take uh, go back to our neon orange. <laughs> this will be on YouTube. Um, you know, it takes me a little while to get them onto YouTube. I try to format them with my fancy video software so that you get as big a picture as I can and I have to reorient it and then save it and it's kind of a huge deal but um, so it takes like a day to get all that done <laughs> but it will be on YouTube okay I don't know what I did there but I did something that I don't like because now she's got a dark spot on her cheek Now for the new year for 2016, we will be still doing the live periscopes at least once a week. Um, we will be um, still doing tutorials, um, but I will be doing more detailed tutorials on Udemy um, and I have paid, paid classes on Udemy. That does not mean I don't want you guys to freak out, which is why I'm telling you now. Um, it doesn't mean the free stuff stopping. Um, because of course it's not. I wouldn't do that to you. But I've got to make some money somewhere. <laughs> so we're going to be doing some in-depth detailed stuff with, you know, proper close-up HD photos, um, you know, and downloads and all that stuff. It'll be over on Udemy. There you go. I like her. She's cute. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, pink back in this one cheek here. I'm also going to be updating my website and hopefully the Yahoo changeover to the new company um, went well this weekend and I'll be able to do that. Udemy is spelled U-D-M-E-Y and it's an online um, teaching website and I'll have, uh, right now there's a free, uh, well I don't know right now, soon there will be the free Hannah Montana course will be back up on there live. Um, I don't know if you all remember when I did that with Claudia Rossi where we did the alteration of the Hannah Montana book. U-D as in dog, M-E-Y dot com. I'll have links on my website, GinaBeArons.com, as soon as I have everything ready. There'll be a I'm going to be adding a class page with links to different class sites, including, yeah, that's it, including um, Crazy Island University. I've got a lot of classes over there. I'm going to have some classes over at Udemy, um, and um, then there'll be another, and there'll be links like for each class, if I can do it, like for each individual class, it will take you right to that class. Um, and then also, um, I'll have a link um, um, for merchandise, for different listings for different merchandise, and then at the bottom will be the different stores. So. Um, and yeah, so the Hannah Montana book free, um, you can see it, of course, on YouTube. It's on YouTube, but if you don't want to, um, if you don't want it there, um, it is also over on Udemy. Uh, and, and I'm going to see if I can even make it downloadable. 
for y'all, which you can't do on YouTube. So now I'm just going to neutralize the back a little bit. Of course, not completely. I like some of these colors that are going on, but it's a little bit distracting with the face. So we want to just kind of neutralize her a little bit. I like that you can see some of the like music notes from the paper underneath through her neck. And you can see some of the paper right here. I love that. I've got my baby wipe here handy so I can use that to spread the paint around and kind of smooth the lines out. And I just took my white and I mixed it with some of the brown and some of the other colors I had going on here on my palette. I will still be teaching with Crazy Island University this next year. We're getting ready to release Journaling Crazy Island Style 2016. There'll be some commercials um, coming out for that soon. I'll let you all know. I'll be posting that to YouTube when it's ready. Thank you. I really encourage you all to go out there and try you know, doing different kinds of artist faces and um, trying their techniques and giving it a shot, but then using what you've learned to come up with something that's uniquely your own. that you can really say this your style uh, no matter what class I take now my style of face shows through this is a pre gessoed little four inch canvas these are coming a two pack for I think five dollars at Hobby Lobby and of course I use a coupon so I get them for you know 40% off so I'm gonna give her a little bit of a tank top here She's cute. Now you can make her pop out even more with the Stabilo pencil. So, you know, just because you want to, if you, maybe you want to consider yourself primarily a painter, doesn't mean that you, you can't, you know, use anything else on your canvases. I want to put a little color on the edges of these, a little bit of these other colors. And this is a wrapped canvas around the side, so it's got a little bit of an edge around the side, which I kind of like. There we go, I like that. So let's take our Stabilo pencil. Let's actually sharpen it a bit so we have a nice point on it. Save your Stabilo pencil shavings because you can um, soak them in water in a jar and you can create this kind of inky, inky thing that is fun to paint with. And if you think I'm kidding, I'm not kidding, see, Stabilo pencil shavings. <laughs> All right. So now we've got our pencil all sharpened. I'm gonna outline her face. I'm gonna put some lines around her neck and shoulders. Not too many lines, not too dark of lines. Have a light touch. You wanna just emphasize and um, help express her features. There we go. I like her. She's cute. Does anybody have any questions? There we go. So whether you choose to do one with features or one without, these are really cute, fun practice to do. And they make really great Christmas gifts. And wouldn't to see even putting them together like that. Where's my other two? Move all the paint out of the way. My 
desk is a mess. Wouldn't they be cute just hanging on the wall? Don't worry, Cheryl. Um, this is going to be on YouTube. And yeah, this is acrylic. I did the faceless one first, and then I did the one with the features. So we did both in the hour that we've been on. And wouldn't I just can totally see a wall in my studio covered with these little paintings. I might have to work on that. I do have a wall that's about three feet wide by, you know, the full length of the room. And I have the space over the door. Uh, you know, I might have to do some of that, that, that little four inch canvases. I just, you can see a whole wall covered in these. I think that would be fabulous. Yeah, like little painting tiles, little tiles covering the wall. I love the idea, you guys. <laughs> See, now I'm going to have trouble giving these away because they look cute together. <laughs> That's the problem when you create art. You know, you want, I need to make some money at it, but then I paint stuff and I don't want to give, give it away or get, or even sell it. It's hard to let go of it. Which would be why I try to like do classes and stuff because that's easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like a quilt only for the wall out of paintings. Because Lord knows I could not make a real quilt and like ever get it done. I started one years ago. It's still in my closet. I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> All right. Does anybody have any questions today? So look for some changes coming up soon. If you're not a member of my Facebook group yet, we are about to hit 500 members soon. When we hit 500 members, and if you're a member of the Facebook group, but only if you're a member of the Facebook group, you're gonna get a free coloring book download from me that's got, how many pages does it have? I don't even know. They're all single-sided. These are some never published doodles, some that are um, digital downloads in my Etsy shop, um, some that you guys have not ever seen or haven't seen in a long time and I filled the whole book with them and this will be a free digital download when we hit 500 members but you have to be a member of my Facebook group so if you're not yet you should go over there and join tell your friends I may later sell them in my Etsy shop um, I haven't decided yet but I won't be doing that until after we you all get your free copy and I'd, I wanted to do this instead of doing it like one giveaway to one person. I wanted everybody to get something. So this is going to be that something. We have a couple minutes. I'm going to sit here and drink my coffee. And you guys can look at the cute paintings. If you have any questions, let me know. I know, right? It's a good idea. Thank you to <clears throat> my admin slash assistants and friends, Jerry. Bellini, Cindy Utter, and Michelle Mitchell because they have been a huge help with the group and with coming up with ideas for next year and encouraging me to um, get off my butt and get it done. <laughs> so, um, and I can use them as a sounding board too, so which is fabulous. It's It's been wonderful and um, they've helped a lot. So there you go, a life of art and self-expression. I'm loving this, you guys. Now I'm going to have trouble giving them away. I've got two more. Two more. I'm going to have to. Wow. We're going to have to work on that, you guys. I'm going to have to hang them up. <laughs> I have a fantastic crew in the group. I actually do. Very much so. And um, you guys haven't heard me say this yet, but I call all of you in my group groupies, which is, it kind of happened by accident, but I thought... Calling y'all groupies was kind of funny and cute and sweet and all at the same time. So you groupies are not too bad either. You know, we're all very supportive and um, I love that. We have a lot of men participating in the group, which is fabulous. And you do not see that in other art groups, not the way we've had it in our group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. So not only do I want to welcome all the men to this broadcast and to the group, but I thank you all for being there and participating. I think it's wonderful that you all feel safe enough to do that. Oh, thanks. I love you all back. It's been just as good for me as it has been for you guys, believe me.
All right, it is 11 o'clock. We do, we have an awesome group of people. So invite your friends. When we hit 500, um, Well, that's a good idea, Mark. We're gonna have to post about this, Mark, in the group. I think this is something that we should post about in the group because this is a really great idea. <clears throat> All right, I'm sorry, I'm reading you guys' posts. Oh, Tara. Hey, welcome. So it's 11 o'clock. We've been on for an hour. We did these two little face, face canvases today. Last week we did a sunflower and before that we did um, the happy trees a la Bob Ross. And I've got two more of these little canvases. So if we have time before Christmas hits, we'll be doing a distra exactly distra distractions or those of us with anxiety disorder and maybe compulsive issues say, ooh, squirrel. <laughs> um, anyway, I have two more of these little canvases, so we will be trying to get two more of these um, little live demos of canvases in before Christmas. Um, I have more of these to do if I'm going to really do them for gifts, so I, if I run out of time to do live episodes, I may do some of them on YouTube, so watch for that. And I've got a bunch of stuff today to film for YouTube, so you all have a great day. Hey, oh, the sunflower is on YouTube. Just Google my name. Go to YouTube and search my name, Gina B. Aarons. I will, sh or put it in Google. I'll show up everywhere. I've been on the internet too long. Now I'm everywhere. I can't hide from anybody. Um, both of these are on YouTube. So the original Periscope of um, Hop that I did this on with, um, um, Cinnamon Cooney and um, Susan Hiles um, where we celebrated Bob Ross is I did this one and then I did this sunflower one which is also on YouTube and these all say the YouTube the Periscope videos all to all the titles start out with saying live recorded live from Periscope or something about Periscope in the title so that's a way to know um, which ones are which and I'm thinking today as I'm talking to you maybe I should put all the Periscope videos in their own playlist what do you all think about that because that might be an easy way to find them these all should be under um, well these three not this one but these should be under Monday with Deco Art too yes see Mark says yes okay Mark <laughs> you know sometimes it's good to get a guy's opinion Mark somebody other than my husband who just looks at me like I'm crazy <laughs> He loves me, but he thinks I'm nuts. I am nuts, but you know. <laughs> All right. I really love this. Okay, you guys, we're going to have to do something with this. I'm, I'm seeing this. I might have to photograph these even for the, the group page. Uh, we, I love you guys, too. Have a great day. Join the Facebook group, A Life of Art and Self-Expression. If you can find the link to it on my website, ginabarons.com, there will be a free giveaway coming up soon. Thank you so much. I try to make them interesting and um, something you all want to see. Um, I don't know how to be anything but me, so this is just me. I'm not putting on airs or anything else, so it's just me. I got asked about that recently. <laughs> I don't know. How, I don't know how to pretend to be somebody else. And I'm thinking about going back to UStream, but I definitely need admin help because I can't see the chat ever. So, um, but I'm thinking for the new year, we need to do Ustream once a month because not everybody does Periscope. So um, that's something else I'm working on and I better write it down because I'm gonna forget again. All right, you all have a great day. Have a great week. And what's, what do we say at the end? Do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. I'll see you later. Ustream is another live broadcasting site that you actually can see from um, a desktop, an iPad, a phone, anywhere. And um, it's just, it's a little trickier. Periscope's easy. <laughs> so that's why I do Periscope. Message me about it in the group. Tag me and I'll explain it to you. Bye, guys. Talk to you later.